You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television, for you, by you. Hi, Jonathan. How are you today? Good, good. Great. So I'm here to talk to you about the third wave of peace doves on Gabriola. Mm. So um, would you like to introduce yourself and yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm um, Jonathan Hoskins. Uh, I moved here with my uh, sweetheart, uh, Lynn. Uh, in 2018, We I took early retirement from King County, Washington. Uh, Lynn is a Canadian in the family. And at least now I'm now a Canadian citizen. Congratulations. Uh, as of a year ago. I had a 45-year career in health and human services, then retired up here. Uh, since then, I've started painting. Uh, I do. I was doing a bunch of different kind of woodworks and such. And so, while I uh, was producing a lot of art, I started creating frames. So now I do framing. That sort of led to this movement. So we built our house on Moby Dick's Way in 2018, and really believe in Gabriola. The, island and it's the special relationship it has both with history nature um bc and especially bc progressive progressive thinking right on yeah and i think um a really good example yeah. of that um, progressive thinking and sort of the international thinking that is done on gabriola is in the peace movement um, the peace movement started quite some time ago um, and we've now are on to our third iteration of what we call the peace stops. If you want to hold one up, we can show our audience what we're, we're looking at. Um, these these doves, um, you can find one in the museum, um, but now you have uh, are doing a, a, a project with these doves. Yes. Um, so um, it started with, you know, we walk so all over, travel all over the island for four, and you always saw the peace doves. And everybody kept going, I wonder where I could get one of those, or wouldn't it be nice to have one of those? And so about a year ago, Lynn started saying, I think I'm going to make peace doves. And then life got in the way. But then about a month ago, since I was making frames and I had everything all set up in the shop, all of a sudden I took, went down to the museum and uh, traced the peace dove that's at the museum from 1984. Uh, that's right. And, uh, started creating them myself and um and i think it's both for authenticity and also to own the motivation is that i think the peace does do reflect gabriola and its sensibilities and its commitment to love and peace and neighborly i mean it's like the hearts when all of a sudden in pandemic all of a sudden everybody had hearts and they did a great job of just turning out hearts um, so what I'm doing is, um, this is being done as a fundraiser for the museum. Oh, great. Uh, and that, um, what we'll do is I'm going to create them, uh, and then we'll make them available and, um, we'll sell them for 75 bucks of which $30 will go to the Gabriela museum. Perfect. Um, to, and to support kind of their ongoing, uh, the memory, the reflection of honoring all the, the folks before us. Okay, well, why don't you step us through like what goes into actually making one of the peace doves? This is kind of curious. I am not a handy woman by any means, so I'm looking around your shop. Um, as you mentioned earlier, it is very clean, which I'm I'm liking. But um, yeah, just take us through the process. Um, sure. The, the original design um, was done back, way back in 1984. Right. Um, and uh, you copied that. And uh, from and what did you do after that? So what? Okay, take me through. So um, making the doves, um, like every project, it always becomes a lot more complicated than you think. <laughs> um, but I wanted to really honor the the sense that when they first made these, you know, they were plywood, just you know, plywood simple, and it, somebody was able to produce a lot of them very quickly. Um, and I have nothing but respect for that um, at this point. Um, so. In looking at it, so first I traced, um, I, I traced the one in the museum, and then took this. This is a three eighths inch plywood, um, and it's clean on one side, and I kept it rough on the other. I, again, it's just sort of to keep the sensibility of the original doves. 
I see here, like on, when, when they're painted, you can see, I don't know if we can capture that, but it's, it, it, you can see the plywood, the roughness coming through um, and make, it's a very rustic look, very in yeah. keeping with Gabriola. Eh? Yeah, the funny thing too is um, it's one finished side plywood fur. I tried to make it, I wanted to do a good job as a woodworker to make these last 40 years. So that's what everybody has done. And the funniest thing is um, in the, the good side, the way I've done the template, um, it's, it's always facing left. <laughs> uh, right on that wasn't intentional but it's like oh okay so um so what i do the project it um and i can show you real quick it starts out here we have a sheet of plywood <laughs> and what i do is i uh, cut the sheet into uh 21 inch into squares okay so the squares, um, then what I do is I screw five sheets of the squares together. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold this up because that, that's an awesomely efficient way to do things. So yeah, we can see there's the five boards together. Right. Okay, and so what's this piece of equipment here for my very non-woodworking uh, yeah, self? This is a bandsaw. A bandsaw, okay. Yeah. And now this part of the project turned out to be a little more dicey than I had expected it to, or at least a lot more work. Um, <laughs> All right. So, um, so what I do, uh, first I had to go get a, a narrow blade um, that um, is ceramic. Okay. Because th this design does not lend itself for quick uh, work. Okay. This this part probably takes about an hour. Okay. So then, um, when I've got that part done, so here's the group. Okay. Um, and okay, so that's what they look like. That's after the bandsaw. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's pretty heavy, actually. Yeah, it is. Right I'm, I'm getting my upper body, which is you know, yeah. Yeah. That's the hard <laughs> part. Um guiding the saw and because it's getting sticky and it weighs a lot okay. you'll just give that to you <laughs> yeah it's it's it actually requires subtlety one of the people don't know is that a canadian invented the robson's head screw which is square head, and you don't see those in the United States. Oh, there you go. Uh, okay. So having removed the screws, okay. there's the big reveal. Oh, right on. So one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Excellent. And they, now, now, do they go this way or that way, or does it matter? Uh, well, this this is the finished side, so okay. th this is actually a really good piece of plywood, so it doesn't matter. Okay. And um, which, so then also then in the the big debate has been um, whether to put hangers on them or not. Oh. Because everybody on the island just drove a screw through them into the posts and whatever. Right. Um, and I've <laughs> quite well. But, you know, maybe you want a little hanger so that you don't have to drive a screw through this thing. Well, you know, it's interesting because what I have been discovering is that once the doves are in position, mm -hmm. generally they stay there. And so yeah. when people buy their properties, the doves are still there. So maybe there's an option for someone to take their dove with them if they put a hanger or, yeah, you know, I, I, I think that's what got me was so many people are the second or third generation uh, to own a property or owner, third or owner, and um, they still have their dove. They, they may not even up. know what the dove's about, right? Exactly. I think, and that's why, that's what, what made me want to look into it because I had no idea what the doves were for, but there was an awful lot of them. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, hey, who, who knows what these are about? And yeah. then that sparked our whole conversations on Facebook to get this project going or this series. So. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> well, it just and again, now more than ever, the world is just needs <laughs> needs some some hope, hope, some reminders of reminders hope, of, yeah. reminders of what we used to care about. Yeah, um, and I and, think we still do care about it. And I think that's why there's such a renewed interest in purchasing the dove and displaying the doves and, and really, you know, everyone's enthusiasm yep. for these um, is a testament to that. Yep. And only because I'm a woodworker and this was my sweetheart's thing. Wait a minute, you're leaving screw holes in these. What are you doing? So I said, okay. So I used a little wood filler to leave a hole. Then, because I like a good product. Okay. So these, you can almost kind of consider them, in the manufacturing world, they probably refer to them as blanks. So these are the blanks. These are the blanks, okay. So. Um, then, so you were saying that, um, you like to finish the edges here and that your first batch, uh, didn't turn out quite so good, but you've, no, the first program. batch I spent a lot more time on the jigsaw or the scroll saw. Uh, but I changed the blade in the band saw to this narrow one. And so these actually are a lot closer to, to good than the first ones. So then, um, and what I do. <laughs> Definitely falls into it. I'm <laughs> overthinking it. But yeah, so that's the. Okay, here, let me, let me, yeah. like smooth, like a. Baby bird's bottom, eh? Uh, well, that's cool. Up to a point. <laughs> so, um, oh, a hack for all the do-it-yourselfer woodworkers, uh, people on the island. Uh, you know, you spend money on tarps. Mm -hmm. Arbutus has a dumpster that is filled with Tyvek. Ah, okay. Free, just pick it up. And it's waterproof. It's as, it's actually stronger than a tarp. Right. So, and it's free, but it's also just a reuse. So I uh, just say that since I cover up my table with this, but uh, I'm a great fan. Of course, now I probably ruined it for myself because there were people all be running down there grabbing the, the tie down. All, all the Gabriel in secrets, right? Yeah. Well, okay. things like other typical would be my wind paints me ruining all my shirts with my painting and such. So this is a this is gy gyro, you know, shirts and clothes. So that way I don't have to worry about making a big mess of them. So, um, and this has been a bit of a debate for myself about how best to approach this. Um, whether to use, uh, this is uh, like an all, sea, all outdoor weather amazing Primer sealer of okay. industrial strength bullseye, right. and I've I still haven't quite figured out whether it would actually make more sense to use uh, this, which is a, a wood protector outdoor sealer. Um, probably six of one half dozen of another, um, except I, but I don't know how well this can, uh, accepts paint. Okay, because um, so. You know, again, I want to make these things last 40 years. Right. That is going to be a question we'll we'll actually ask the original makers is what paint did you use? Because I think a lot of them are still in their original condition. I, I and, suspect that's true as well. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. So how many um, doves can you do in a day or how long would it take you to complete all five of the original cut? Oh, um, to, to do, to set this up, 
takes probably, I'm pretty sure, two to three hours to get to this state. Okay. Um, for five of them. Well, yeah, probably three hours. Um, but just, you really just take your time. I, the other two things, uh, A, uh, I have, uh, it's very meditative. Okay. Um, so you have to really, you saw that, you know, just paying attention and being mindful while you're cutting, uh, which is, is actually, it, it's, a, it's a nice thing to do. So what is your musical choices when you are um, working on your birds? Do you have like peace music in the background, folk from the 60s? Like what's, what's going on for you here? Okay, earphones. I have my, my earphones, which... Uh, are uh, so I listen to um, 101. I rock and roll, right? You know, um, 101.1, and then um, also uh, chili occasionally, and and I found a new public station, oh, really? which plays everything from jazz to old country western to fiddle tunes and stuff. So um, I'll just actually rock and roll is kind of pretty good, but. Um, right on. Yeah, I right. definitely need that. It's a big part of it. So you, now this is using the bullseye primer, which I got a killer deal on. Awesome. Um, so see how thick it is? Mm -hmm. So they, okay. So I use a foam roller, slop it on, because uh, I can, I will sand it before I put the final coat. So if it's a little lumpy, but the most important part is since it's a, you know, a laminate uh, plywood, you really need to make those, sure those edges are then which is that's one of the reasons I was considering whether to use a, a sealer, a true wood sealer, because that would saturate. Um, but I've this stuff is used bullseye. Uh, this is used for everything from sheetrock to um, all kinds of construction materials. And this is typically me where suddenly my table is a mess and I'm having to negotiate. So again, um, each each dove does take a fair amount of time to get to. Right. Yeah. That so, um, that was the one thing about the project. Where I'm going. What did I do to myself? <laughs> but um, again, uh, both I'm excited about the ability to support the museum, um, and it just it just it feels like a good thing to be doing. Right. Um, we we're expecting possibly uh, just to even. Even as you start telling people about them, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't end up making a hundred of them or more. Oh wow! Like you say, I think people are very interested in really displaying their commitment uh, to peace and to wanting to be part of that something. A, a small reminder in uh, in uh, Ganageha, which is Mohawk language. Okay. Uh, you say you can say. They walk in Dunhung Jone, Naskana Agahage. And what that means is I want for there to be peace. So uh, in Mohawk, the word is uh, skana, okay. peace. And so this is one of the reasons why I was attracted to finding out um, because peace is a huge, huge element of, of, of our culture. Um, because again, this is this is uh, uh, how the, the culture is, is the foundation yeah. is is peace peace among nations peace among people peace among families yeah. so i think what everyone gets out of owning a dove again it's just always bringing you back to that reminder to you know peace well, starts at home peace starts with you right right and somebody else also pointed out to me that uh maybe, maybe it was you that it also that this dove particular dove style is used often to reflect Christianity and Christian and love, peace, Jesus, sort of Jesus teaching or what people don't remember, or most people don't, is like the whole anti-war movement uh, in the 60s in the United States was led by, um, by Christians, oh. uh, Catholic. Presbyterian, all the, I mean, they're all most the original folk songs and everything were all done in, in churches and, and especially you, you had the Catholic priests being arrested all the time. But 
I think that that's the other thing that, that uh, as I see the rise of Christian nationalism in the United States, uh, I just would love to find some way to remind people that that this wasn't the perspective of the church uh, in the 60s. Mm. Uh, the, the church was a big area of leadership in uh, everything from the uh, the voting registrations in Alabama to fighting the Vietnam War, uh, the Bergen brothers, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So well, I, yeah. I think the symbol itself, the peace dove, does have quite a history. Yeah, uh, definitely one that I'm doing a bit of research on um, because I think the peace dove really has had many, many, many connotations, many uses, iterations, and yeah. many, many iterations. And I think that that uh, that idea is the one that you know the 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 universal idea of the dove as peace is really what was being trying, you know, to be captured with these particular doves, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. my father used to tell a story about um, an artist who was trying to draw a dove or, and that the, uh, the impatient emperor waited months and months and months and then uh, when he finally forced his hand, he pulled out a piece of paper and in three strokes drew the perfect dove. Right. And the guy goes, why didn't you do this earlier on? And he just showed, he pulls drawers of a dove's wing, a dove's beak, a dove's, says, no, in order to create that simple symbol, you had to have more of a sense of the fuller meaning, the fuller piece of it. So, um, you missed his phone. <laughs> that's I was Lynn's waiting job. to say that. <laughs> yeah. That's Lynn's job. So, uh, but actually, then, um, I'm going to do something. So now I put it, I have a my drying rack. I make uh, artistic uh, palettes. I see. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. here we're gonna. I'm gonna just open this up so we can get a bit of a picture here. Yeah. So now, oh. so now it'll dry for 24 hours or so. The the primer takes a while, and then I'll paint. Then I've got the white paint in there. Then I'll show you that real quick. Okay. So I'll do that. Yeah, so uh, from the time I was uh, a teenager in anti-war movement and all that, um, I never used to uh, sign my return address. But instead of signing a return address, uh -huh. I the, uh, uh, this will work. But I, what I did constantly was I practiced and practiced the story of the simple. Uh, so my return address has always been awesome for 40 years. Right on. <laughs> so it's kind of the, the dove theory. That's not my better. I usually do a little better than that. But, and you would use this as a in all your protest letters when you sent them no, out every, or anything? Every, all my was always, uh, the peace dove was always my return address. Right. Is that what attracted you to making the peace stuffs as well? Like it that just sort of felt connection? like it felt like the sim. It just felt like a similar thing, um, but I didn't really articulate it quite that in the same way. And so, it has also made me um, wonder: with some of these, wouldn't it be fun to take the the dove and put your favorite saying like? I mean, I remember my, I was telling, reminding Lynn, my, we always had a poster in our house. My teenage, uh, my older sister was a, quite a leader in the anti-war movement uh -huh. uh, and were busy with it. And, uh, but we used to have this thing of war is not healthy for children and other living things. And it showed two hands holding flowers, uh, Picasso drawing. Right. But I thought that would be on one of the doves to have that. Uh, so I thought maybe it'd be kind of fun to also on the doves, maybe run a few other side, sort of side doves with, 
with the still, actual with, with some of those or, yeah. anti-war sayings or something or oh. um or you know uh, draw out some of my paintings <laughs> i've got a lot of gabriel like paintings and stuff it'll be some painting on and then have some fun well and i that, think I, on. I do know some of the doves have been repainted we have one purple dove on the island but so i think really it's it's this is the next generation and it really the doves fit the context of the time right. and so i think that would be a great what would be movie. really fun is after so we'll get through <laughs> do this part of it but then i have also thought how cool it would be um, to have an art to, to, as public art, but to have all many of the ar ar island artists take the dove and do their thing with it. I mean, I can just remember, could just I could just guess, you know, like Deb Cheney or Tyrell Clark or or Narissa or what what they might do with that as a palette would be the dove and how they might. How they might express it. And then do something that like that as a way of public art. I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah. So this was done by my grandmother in Seattle. It was actually a winner in a poster contest done by, uh, she was 17 years old. And it's in the, it, this is actually in the museum, uh, the city of Seattle uh, archives. Oh, right on. Uh, the poster itself. And so this is a picture of the poster, but uh, that's probably too weird as an aside, but it, it basically. Well, it was, certainly does lend yeah. itself to the Some idea that, that yeah. well, the, the whole idea of being involved in what's going on around you in the world in and art. working towards peace and art and yeah. everything. Yeah. And what, a, what a, an amazing, artifact to have left over or yeah. item from your yeah. from your grandmother and she was 17 when she did that yeah it's pretty amazing she passed away in 1963 and okay um she had the unfortunately all of her art was lost or whatever except we, we have this one watercolor by her that she did in her 50s which was totally the that was totally the 50s look right uh but anyway uh, i would just say that like so many things Art always has a way of bringing together people for movement, for bringing people together. And art is essential to that. And so that's where this comes in my family. It starts a long time ago. So in, in 1917 for World War I, my grandmother had painted this as a 17-year-old girl. And it was a, it submitted in a poster contest in the city of Seattle. And so, uh, and was actually was second out of all the submissions, but uh, it was in the archives. But so art and movement and art and fundraising is really pretty much in our blood. <laughs> that is awesome. So thank you very much today, sure. Jonathan, for your time and for sh taking us through the process of the creation of our third generation of peace stuffs. And, yeah, uh, super fun, yeah. We look forward and um, one last thing. If uh, folks are interested oh. in um, contacting you, sure. uh, what is the best way to do that? Um, I would say um, two ways will be, um, uh, one would be to contact me through uh, hoskinsarts.com, actually hoskinsarts at gmail.com um, and or um, phone. Um, Two five zero three two five zero zero five six, but I'm also going to make sure that there's a, a place to sign up uh, at the museum. Perfect. Yeah, you know, and the museum can take your name and and probably what we're going to do is I'm going to just keep producing them, but it may be that uh, at the museum you'll take down your order and then we'll try to deliver it within a couple of weeks. Okay, perfect. Yeah. That sounds good. Sure. And thank you. Thank you.